This is Twit. I wrote this. I wrote this article that I called "stupider," <laughs> which is <laughs> Good which is a great which is a great word, um, and it's just based on this notion that you hear someone say, or writers say, whatever, uh, AI is making us stupider. You know, there was a, a headline I riffed on on Twitter a month or two ago that was something like, uh, you know, uh, uh, using AI to write software code is going to make developers stupider. And I was like, you know, it's been out for 10 seconds. Why don't you give it a, give it a minute? You know, like it, it, we're rushing to judgment here. Or, you know, Microsoft sponsored a study that was in part said something like, we, you know, they didn't say it this way, but it, AI is going to make people stupider. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you could point to any technology sure. through history and you will find the people the saying this exact thing, right? Yeah. The, 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 the printing ballpoint press. pen is going to make us stupid. There was a, a I, I misquote this all the time. I don't know the, the exact uh, context of this anymore, but in the show Deadwood, which was on HBO, fantastic show, mm -hmm. that swear engine guy sitting there on his porch and he's watching something occur on the horizon, drinking his coffee. And this number one guy comes in. He's like, what? Is, What's going on down there? And he goes, oh, those are those are polls for the telegraph. He's like, what's a telegraph? And he's like, well, it's like the mail, but you can respond instantly. And so he does one of those pregnant pause things. He drinks the coffee and he goes, why would anyone uh, want to respond instantly he, you need right. to take the time to, you know, figure out your answer, right? Like the, the way we correspond now made sense to him because he's of that era, right? So the guy's like, Kind of a, it's kind of like a mobster type, you know, and, he, and the number one guy says, uh, do you want me to tear him down? <laughs> and he's like, no, leave him up. I don't, it's fine. Um, I love Al Swearingen. That's oh, a really too. great conversation. It's wow. just excellent. And it's it. and, and that's the you know, other than his decision to keep it up, because a lot of people would have been like, no, nope, tear it down. Tear we'll it do down. Anything. Um, you know, this is just a I think it's like generational bias. Like the the car is maybe the best example for people. Like when cars first came out, you had to be a mechanic to own a car. You couldn't mm -hmm. own a car otherwise. You had to know how the thing worked. When that stopped being true, the guys that did know cars that were mechanics hated the fact that normal people could now own cars. They were like, you don't even know how the engine works. Well, you know, whatever. As stick shift, same thing, right? Automatics mm -hmm. take off, obviously, because they're automatic. Um People are losing their minds now over this notion of like self-driving cars and like, you know, I'm going I'm to drive. I like to drive. You know, it's like, yeah, you're the reason we have traffic, idiot. <laughs> the people like you cause this butterfly effect that if this thing was actually controlled by computers, everything would just be on time. Like I it's you're of your age. Like you just get stuck. You, you think like it's always been this way. But especially with technology, it's been this way for 10 seconds. But you're so stuck in this rut. You have a hard time, you know, seeing your way out of it. I remember doing so a, being in a university class, talking about futures, and we talked about automated driving. And and one of the uh, one of the students put up their hand and says, "Look, but if we don't know how to drive, what happens if the computers fail?" It's like, ah, we'll all be dead anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know, driving is going to be the least of your concerns. I this is I that's that's a fascinating way to approach that problem. You mm -hmm. know, like, but what if, like, but what if you have a heart attack while you're driving? Yeah. What's going to happen to the people around you? I mean, I yeah, what if? Um, in a weird coincidence, uh, the, so tying together the last thing we talked about and the next thing we're going to talk about the next major topic is at this AI event last week, Microsoft showed a demo and you can actually go see it now. I linked to it in the show notes somewhere. Mm -hmm. They used basically vibe coding to create a Quake 2 that runs inside a Copilot. Okay. So this this is causing people to lose their minds, mm -hmm. right? So this uh, making this, Altair basic didn't do it. So, right. So first of all, just because they've gotten charges of theft, Microsoft owns this game, right? You understand that, right? Like id software, which made this game was purchased by Bethesda, which is now owned by Microsoft. So was Carmack this, unhappy? The guy who wrote it? No, this is part of the story. So some guy gets on Twitter and this is not, I, I don't mean to, I'm not, I'm only singling this guy out because Carmack replied to him. Yes, but and this is the complaint too, by the yes. way. Oh, of course. <laughs> the 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 complaint was this is an abomination, right? We are we're gonna we're losing developer jobs, and you're doing this like, and then there's all these people like the pe the way people chime into this is astonishing. Yeah. I put some in the notes just because these are amazing. 
So people are kind of responding to this guy the way I am talking about AI and thing, you know, about AI in general. Like the goal is games, not jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Jobs don't inherently deserve to exist. The goal of technology is to cut the number of jobs and increase efficiency. No one cares about your jobs. <laughs> like many people don't care about their jobs. <laughs> um, if the goal is jobs, we should just dig dishes with spoons, not tractors, <laughs> right? It's like, it, which is the point. Like, where does this end? You know? What? You're going to use spoon technology? That takes away people's jobs. <laughs> what about your hands? Oh, Why well, your hands good enough, princess? Get them in the yeah. dirt. Yeah, so exactly. this is an AI generated level is basically what's going mm -hmm. on. Right? Yes. Yeah. So here's the thing. The best comment though, is collision though, and think know, about visual. think about video games today. Video games today are made uh, the biggest video games are made by these giant companies, hundreds of millions of dollars. The budgets of Hollywood movies, and if they are successful, the revenues of Hollywood movies or more. I mean, video games actually make more money than Hollywood. This guy says, "Wasn't Quake made by a handful of people?" It was a very small group. <laughs> and it right? was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This will enable that to be the case again, right? Like, uh, like, this is the exchange server job I always, uh, uh, thing I always talk about. The guy's like, you mean to tell me the last thing I'm going to do is hand off my exchange, you know, uh, install to Microsoft. Yeah. Your company is not here so you can serve email. Right. Email is just a, a tool you use. You're, you sell widgets or whatever your company does. You're not here for email. Like, we've lost track of the point of this stuff. Well, you know? and also, this is not, I mean, creating a Quake 2 level Mm -hmm. is well, probably easier than writing a short story or a paragraph of text. It's just okay, cobbling but you understand together it's bits gonna and do pieces. that stuff too, right? So mm -hmm. I to me it, when I like uh, I have not heard anything about the next Call of Duty game. I don't know what it is. I know it's going to be more of the same, right? I, most of the work's already been done. Like what we need are I guess for the single player game a story, characters, arc, whatever, and then all the assets that go along with that. And then what we need for multiplayer are game types, which we already have, and then levels. Levels, you know, right. that's level true. design. We know we can examine levels, see which are the most popular, literally by usage, and figure out what makes those things good. Yeah. Some sense of balance and whatever, like one side's not off. It's just like what you know, weapon balance, same thing. AI is going to be really good at that stuff, you know, and I just. I'm not saying, well, I'm sort of saying, I guess at some point, maybe uh, completely AI generated, whatever, but it will happen in stages or whatever. But the idea, the goal here is to make better games. And if this can do that and it can, mm -hmm. this is smart. And as uh, Richard said, John Carmack's response to this is basically what I said, but more eloquently, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like this is. Just as the guy, you know, someone else pointed this out on Twitter. He said, you're telling this to the guy yeah. who came out with game engines that were so much more sophisticated years ahead of everyone else and then released them openly so everyone else could copy them. What, right. what do you think he's going to say to this? Yeah. Of course, he's, he thinks this is great. Do you know how many programmers he put out of work by giving away that engine? Are you kidding? Right, right. But how many great games came out of the fact that this Tons. engine was now available, right? Or what, or the source code or whatever it was, or in the beginning it was extensibility. Like they would do doom and it, you know, here's the, you can make your own wad files for doom or whatever. And then in mm -hmm. uh, the next version, they're like, okay, now here's an editor you can use that will help you make these things even more easily. And now we're doing 3d and here's how you can do it, you know, in 3d for quake. Um, this stuff is astonishing. Like it's just, yeah. um, and it's how, and it's how progress has come all along. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I, you know, I, <laughs> it was again just a weird coincidence. I hadn't, I didn't see or know anything about this John Carmack thing when I wrote it, and then in the wake of that, I was like, yeah, okay, here's a great example. Like this is, there you go, perfect, right? Um, I, I don't know. I we'll see. I'm, I'm sure the next Call of Duty will be terrible, but I'm also <laughs> sure that as we go forward, they could be made better. Humans can make it terrible just as well as AI. I, yeah, well, I think that. they excel at making it terrible. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, maybe someone at Activision will just talk to chat GPT or, and say, hey, what have we been doing wrong? And they were like, you don't have enough time. So let me just highlight the top hundred, you know, and whatever <laughs> and go, you know, just fix this stuff. Because Bug I'm, fixing would be good, right? Yeah, that seems sure. like a good thing. Here's what would be good. This is, yeah. this is my Call of Duty experience. I play, you know, two, well, as many as to five times a week, maybe let's say two to five times a week. 
uh, I would say on average, about once a week. I'm like, all right, I got a couple hours to kill. I got nothing to do. I'm going to do this thing. Open the laptop, run the game. It's like, please wait, stalling 132 megabyte or 132 gigabyte update. What the fuck? What? what? And I, oh God, could you just do this while you're asleep? Why? Do, you know, like, and then I can't, I don't, it takes two hours to update the game, you know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. That's a little, that's a little. Yeah. Better, Maybe AI could do that too. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything Maybe. it can't do? I, don't know. I was reading Carmack's reply. I think right on. You know, yeah. He, yeah. this is what tools do. They right. That's right. It, it, universally, he said. He says, "Will programmers be around in the future? I don't know. There are fewer farmers than ever because of farm implements, that's farm right. tools. But it, yeah, now that, that's a great example too. Like the way um, you make farming ever more efficient. And unfortunately, the end game is factory farms and." seeds that have a, a, a patent associated with yeah. them mm-hmm. that blow into people's farms and then they get sued by these giant companies. So like everything can be made terrible, but the aim is to make it better. Does it, <laughs> you know? I'll have to ask Corey this. Does it always mm-hmm. have to end in shittification? Is the question. Oh, that's I'm going to talk to this just to a minor degree. Right. The, answer, I, the answer I believe is no, but the answer real world is almost always yes. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to, but I feel like it, it often it, does. It pretty much does, yeah. The uh, exception proves the rule. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.